everyone, Renee here with Jade Penguin Jewelry. Um, today we're going to try something a little bit different. Um, I have some dice here, and I'm going to take my D4. So, we're going to see what the dice want me to make today. Here's my first card. So we'll see what we get. We've got a one. So we got earrings. So let me grab my earrings card. Two, we're going to make some drops. Then we're going to see what theme we're going to make it in today. Four, Southwest themed. Okay. Ooh. And then, what color? Roll another six. Two, rain colored, south, southwest themed earrings. I was hoping I'd get a 20 because it lights up, but there we go. Got a four. All right. I'm going to make a note of what we're doing. We're going to do earrings today. They're going to be drops. Southwest. And in the rain palette. Okay. I will be back shortly. I'm going to see what I can find that meets these criteria. Okay. So, it was hard to find pull stuff out of the rain palette for Southwest themed because I really wanted to go with the classic turquoise and coral and silver, um, the very Native American iconic Southwest colors <clears throat> for this, but um, I think I got some pretty good matches as far as um, the rain color goes. So I have the two darker blues a black, some browns, a mix of, I think this is all from two, two different broken necklaces, and then this spice jar has some nice um, silver pieces in it, might use. I have this um, single earring, at least I think it was an earring, yeah, there we go, this earring here. Um, might use some of the pieces out of there. I'm not sure yet. I got two little lizards and some brass and silver tone arrows. And then my ear wires and some backs. So let's see how bad um, this goes. <laughs> got my jump ring ring. And I got my We'll start out with just a pair of needle nose pliers and see what we can think of. Let's see what's in here. Got some randomness in this one. These wood beads might be good. Those two little silver beads out. Those might be fun. You hear my dog shake in the background. Oh, Winston just woke up from his nap. Okay, we're gonna see what we like out of this. Um, I do have. Some beads out of here that might be good. Go ahead and dump the extra beads out. Apologize for the plastic noise. Let's see. All right. So we got 
some sets here. That's a good blue. It's a little bit lighter than on our card. Might go with those dark ones. Okay, I'm gonna keep those out. These are becoming very chunky very fast. Let's see, these might be too big, but we'll see how this goes. I don't know, these might be long drops if we do it like this. Let's see, I'm gonna grab some eye pins and see how long we're getting. bottom <clears throat> sorry I'm gonna definitely need a bottom bead because these holes on these wooden beads are huge and my eye pin just goes right through it so let's see if we can put maybe the blue guys at the bottom then the wooden bead I'm gonna go white on top no let's see here this good. Those might be good. Those are a little bit shiny compared to the rest of the beads I got going on. That's not... no. I'm not digging these big round beads. Maybe switch them out with two lava beads. That might be better. Yeah, I think I like that look better. So now we have, oh, that one's broken. Okay, let's try this again. Lava bead, blue bead. question is what's going to make them southwest? The little lizards at the bottom? If we do little arrows. I don't think the arrows are big enough for those beads that we're using. Here, I'll scoot this stuff up so I'm not working at the bottom of the screen like I did in my last video. Let's see. I think we're going to go lizards. And I don't know if the lizards need some friends to hang down. some brown. We'll see. I'll go ahead and grab this little guy here. And round nose pliers. Do the same. So we have this first bit. Yeah, I think I like that. Then we're gonna need a jump ring. Look at this size. One, two. Put my jump ring ring on. So if this is your first time watching one of my videos, hello, welcome. Um, 
I'm a crafter and I dabble in a lot of different crafts but mostly jewelry. Um, I like to use this tool which is called a jump ring ring because it saves my nails from trying to open jump rings like if you want to hold it and brace it in between your fingers and also I find it's easier to use than trying to hold the tiny jump ring in between two pliers and then holding tightly with one plier put down these ones pick up what you're working on and then do what you need to do so I like using the jump ring ring so let's see, there's our little lizards and some blue, let's see if we can't get some of that brown in there. So I'm going to get a head pin for that. I don't need very long ones, of course then I grab the longest ones. We'll just, we'll grab those. I also have, oh, where did they go? I'll just grab them out of here. I also have in my little tray some ball headed head pins. So instead of the, the flat, I don't know if that's going to focus for you guys. Instead of having that flat nail type head, these ones have little balls at the end. So we might try those. Those ones might look better, even though they are in a brass versus a silver. We'll see if the little wooden beads enjoy being on here. Oh good, they don't roll off. So we can thread. We'll do two. One of these silver beads. And two. I'm gonna have to get another one out. Alright, these kind of are Cheerio colored. These little wooden beads. Two, we'll get this silver. Get that on there. And then wood wood kind of like that that's all right let's see one step looper tool i enjoy the one step looper as anybody that's seen my previous videos on making knows, it's one of my favorite tools because it gives a nice consistent uh, loop. If you need small loops, that it's the way to go. Okay, I'm going to squeeze that close. Um, it's fast, it's easy. You can make your own loops. Here's a little bit of extra wire by bending it at a 90 degree angle, angle so it makes like a nice little L like this so the pressure from the L holds your beads on the rest of the tube and then you can take your round nose pliers and just curve and work it around and kind of make sure when you're doing this that you have a spot that you're looking at on your pliers you can even mark it with a sharpie if you want to, if you're going for um, a certain size, you can grab either a silver sharpie or a black sharpie, whatever is going to show up on your round nose pliers. These ones are black tipped. I have silver ones so I can mark little circles on these guys. And then I also have a tool that looks like this that will make rounds as well. So it bends the outside around um, the tapered cone here. So you can make circles 
that way. Um, again, if you're going for a consistent size throughout a project, like if you're making uh, a necklace that has a whole bunch of satellite beads um, in between bits of chain, this will come in handy too because this will help you make even circles all the way around. Um, I just, I enjoy the one step looper for a lot of my projects. You don't have to have it. You don't have to have more tools than you need. Really round nose and a pair of needle nose and you can pretty much do anything with enough, you know, practice. So this is the loop I made. It came out pretty good um, for this one. Another way if you have softer wire, um, like beading wire, and you don't want to clip it because it, you're worried about the uh, the loop popping open over time or stress, you can just make your circle have a tail and then wrap it around the stem. So when you make your 90 degree angle, just make sure that you have a little bit of room between your bead or whatever's on your pin, and so you can wrap the tail of the wire around to keep it the loop closed. So then that way you don't have to worry about it opening up and the necklace or earring falling apart. So there's plenty of different ways to make loops in jewelry. You don't always have to have uh, a special tool for it. I just enjoy it. I use it a lot. Okay, so I'm going to use it here. It cuts and rounds all at the same time. And then I just take my round nose pliers and work that end back together so it doesn't come apart. And I did that too soon because now I need to open it to get it on my jump ring. There it goes. So get my needle nose and twist it back and give it just a little bit of a squeeze to make sure that it's closed so nothing tries to escape off of the uh, jump ring. There we go. So I'll grab a big jump ring and I'll show you that when you're opening a jump ring um, some people have the urge to pull it apart, but if you twist it open, like you're opening a bag of chips, um, like this motion, it's much easier to get whatever you need on and to close it back up, opening the bag of chips in the other direction, to keep that circle shape. Um, if you pull it open, like if I had my two pairs of pliers and I just pull it like this put my stuff on and I go to close it back up it's much harder to be round so it's not quite as round as it was before and you have to keep like working it to get those ends to meet back up again um, so on smaller jump rings this the opposite end of the opening tends to flatten out when you pull it apart um, to make it look like a C so that's why the jump ring ring is handy because it helps you twist it open and then twist it close. So there's a little tip for jump rings if you are wondering why your jump rings get flat on one side when you open it like a C. This gets flat and then you try to bring it back together and this will stay flat and it kind of start to be an oval shape. Anyways, back to the earrings. Um, so these are kind of southwesty blue jean, blue uh, earrings. I don't think we're going to add any more to them just because they're going to start getting heavy. Some people have um, earring, er, ears that they can handle heavy earrings on. I have seen ginormous earrings in my Goodwill boxes and more power to you that you can wear something that big. I would drive myself insane wearing something that long. Um, so there we go. We have these opened. 
twisting it back close. I'm gonna push it just a little bit in, make sure it's snug. Put these little earring backs on. Maybe. There it goes. Alright, so there we have our first dice roll set of earrings. Here we go, I'll put them on this little card so you guys don't have to look at the palm of my hands. There we go. Um, some lizards, some wooden beads, and some blue beads. So they pretty much match our rain palette that we did. I didn't include any white. That's the only thing that's not in here. But there we go. So I call that a, a, a win for the first dice roll game. And I appreciate you guys sticking around and watching me uh, struggle through that. See you next time.